was insane. Good morning again. Good morning, Yay. children. Day three. Yay. I'm so excited. Me too. I can't wait. Because we want to see which team's going to win. No, that's <laughs> nonsense. Oh. We want to learn so much more. Oh, yes. We want to learn about the Word of God. And again, how God provides. He has provided in the last two days so much. Well, I can't wait to learn and see what's going to happen today. So the first day was manna in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the widow with the fly of the oil. Mm -hmm. Maybe today would be like ice cream and... Jelly. Jelly. Peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. <laughs> I don't jelly. Know. <laughs> okay, you Red jelly or around. green jelly? Um, pink jelly. <laughs> All right, we'll see you again. Stop with these puns. They're getting way too cheesy. <laughs> oh. Okay, enough of that. Um, it's time for you know what it's time for? It's time for To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be faithful I want to be faithful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to be I want to be I want to be I like to think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in Jesus was one of the most famous people in all of Israel. One day, as he was teaching, thousands of people came to listen, hanging on his every word. He spoke and taught in a way that people could understand. There were people from all social classes. Some were Jews, others were Gentiles. 
Yet each of them found significance in the wisdom with which he taught. Jesus had a lot to say, and later during the day, the crowds became hungry. Jesus, the people are hungry, his disciples came and told him. You must send the people away to find a place to stay and find something to eat. Jesus looked at the thousands of people. It was a huge crowd. There were 5,000 men, plus women and children. Then Jesus gave a strange order to his disciples. You give them something to eat, he commanded them. The disciples were confused. We don't have any food. And even if we spent all the money we had on food, there still would not be enough. Then Jesus asked them, what food do you have? One of his disciples, Andrew, came up to Jesus with a young boy. This boy has five barley loaves and two fish, but that is not enough for all these people. Have the people sit down, Jesus instructed. The disciples went to work arranging the people into an orderly seating pattern. The young boy watched as Jesus held up his food and thanked God for it. Suddenly, a miraculous sign occurred. After giving thanks, Jesus started handing out the food. The more he handed out, the more food there was. God was multiplying the five barley loaves and two fishes to be enough to feed 5,000 people. The crowds were amazed. Once again, Jesus' disciples witnessed firsthand the power of the Son of God. Jesus was constantly illustrating and teaching them valuable lessons that would help strengthen their faith. With God, nothing was impossible. Not even turning two fishes and five loaves of bread into a 5,000-piece lunch. As the disciples scooped up the leftovers, they filled 12 full baskets. This was an undeniable miracle. Who could have such power? Indeed, this Jesus was the Son of God. That day, thousands more people believed, repented, and put their trust in God. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are in control, that our lives are in your hands and that you will take care of us, that you will not withhold any good thing from those who love you, that you will make our paths straight and guide us through our lives. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to trust you and trust your plan. We thank you that we can come here today and enjoy the second last day of Holiday Club. May we really learn from your word today, hear what you have to say. May we take it and apply it to our lives to be better people for you, Lord. We love you. Amen. Where's my spatula? You know, I feel like something's about to go wrong again. What do you mean? Well, it just feels like every day at this time, something goes wrong in the kitchen. Oh dear. Should, should I go check? Um, no, 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 no. Maybe not. We can watch it rather. Oh, okay. Let's. Blueberry. Hello kids! So today Cinnamon and Sugar are teaming up to do a nice dessert topping. Yeah, you know, after that dry fail, we're really looking to do something better with this dessert. And this is going to taste amazing. We have pretzels, um, smarties and Oreos. And we need to crush those Oreos. Yeah, let's do this. Sweet. Let's start putting some in, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah, we get a lot gonna, of we're gonna, we're gonna do some, some smarties. smarties. Some smarties. Oh, my God. 
remind me never ever <laughs> to let those boys back into the kitchen ever again <laughs> nothing can be as messy as that milkshake nothing no shaylin don't do it <laughs> it's too late lisa we've already begun so we are playing flower face so what you'll need is a little bowl or a tin that has flour inside and then you're gonna go and sneak some jelly tarts in. Shake it about so that you don't know where they are. Okay, so now we're gonna begin and we're gonna see who wins. Hopefully it is sugar. There are eight jelly tarts inside each of these bowls filled with flour and whoever gets all eight first wins. <clears throat> in three, two, one, go. Good game, good game. Because I won! Yay! <laughs>
Why don't you have a donut? They always make you feel better. No. <laughs> Carly, what's the matter? So, we're in the night went away when Larry was supposed to have a sleepover. I'm sorry. It sounds like that would make you really sad. Yeah. You're looking pretty sad. You know what I think will make you feel better? What? I read a verse in the Bible this week that made me feel better. Can I share it with you? Yeah. It's from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18. Do you know what it says? Yeah. It says, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, because this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. <gasps> really? That's a really long verse, though. I think we can try it together, shall we? Okay, okay rejoice always. Rejoice. Pray continually. Pray continually. And give thanks in all circumstances. And give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God for you. For this is the will of God for you. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. And do you remember where it's from? Um, no. <laughs> it's from 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18. Do you want to try it one more time? Okay. Okay. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Pray continually. And give thanks in all circumstances. And give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God for you. For this is the will of God for you. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So Curly, do you think that means if we have to rejoice always that we have to be happy all the time? No, because I can have a sad face and still be joyful. That's right. And if I say that you must pray continually, does that mean I'll sit here all the time and pray? No. It means that, um, what does it mean? Well, it means we must have an attitude of worship no matter what we're doing in our day and we can give thanks no matter what happens. Okay. So, do you think that makes you feel a little bit better about your uh, sleepover with Wormy Pie? Yeah. <laughs> it does, that's good. Bye. 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 All I want to do is praise your name from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Oh my God, and all I want to do is praise your name.
I will praise you. When you take away, I will praise your name. With my last breath, I will praise you. For all eternity, I will praise your name. Yes. We're going to get ready to learn more about it. That's exciting. So if you are grade R to grade 3, your lesson starting now. But if you are grade 4 and upwards, skip to this number on the timeline. Hello boys and girls and welcome to today's lesson. We are going to learn about how Jesus fed over 5,000 people with only two fish and five loaves of bread. And hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll have a greater understanding of the compassion that Jesus has towards us and about his miraculous power. And in turn, that we may learn to show compassion and care to other people and to have greater faith in this powerful God that we serve. Some of you might know this story really well, and if you do, I want you to still listen closely to learn something new. And if you haven't heard of this story before, you can read about it in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21. I'm going to give you a summary of what happened and then we're going to learn some lessons from the story. So by now, Jesus was pretty famous in Israel. He was able to perform miracles such as healing people that were really sick. So there was a large crowd of people following Jesus where he went, really hoping for him to heal their loved ones. Now, Jesus had just learned about the death of his cousin, John the Baptist. And he was feeling really sad. He was with his disciples and he was just on his boat going across the lake, uh, wanting to get a bit of time to relax. He was really tired. But when he got to the shore, he saw that there was a large crowd. They had known where he was going to be and they were waiting there for him. Now, he could have stayed on the boat and, you know, gone to a different place where he could be alone with his disciples. But he saw the crowd and he had great compassion on them. He really cared about them. So even though he was feeling really tired, he still sought to serve them and to teach them and to heal their sick loved ones. So now there was this big crowd. And after teaching and healing, it was getting really late in the day. And the disciples could see that these people were starting to get hungry. And they were kind of in the middle of nowhere. So the disciples said to Jesus, Jesus, please tell these people to go back home or to go to a nearby village somewhere and find some food or a place to sleep. It's getting late. Jesus told his disciples to feed the people. The disciples must have thought, huh? How are we going to feed these thousands of people? We don't have any food on us. And even if we did, it wouldn't be enough to feed so many people. Jesus asked them, what food do you have? So they looked around in the crowd and they found this little boy. One of the boys in the crowd 
came and brought his lunchbox to Jesus. Inside were two fish and five loaves of bread. Now, this was enough to feed him, maybe one person. It was not enough to feed 5,000 people. But Jesus received this with thanks. He lifted up this fish and this bread to God, and he gave thanks for the food. Then the most amazing thing happened. Jesus was handing out this food to everyone that was there, and the food just didn't run out. There was just more and more fish and more and more bread. Everybody there ate until their tummies were full and there were still leftovers. Jesus told his disciples to go collect the leftovers and they were able to fill 12 baskets of leftovers. Now, the 5,000 people I'm talking about were just the men. That's not even including the women and the children. Altogether, there may have been about 15,000 people. Have you ever seen 15,000 people in one place? Now, can you imagine trying to feed all of those people? But this just shows the miraculous power of Jesus. That day, thousands of people started believing in God because of what they saw Jesus do. There are some really important lessons that we can learn from the story. If we think of how Jesus was feeling, he was feeling tired. He had received really sad news, but he still chose to serve the people, to heal them, to teach them, and even to feed them. Now, with us, sometimes when we have bad news, we just become a bit grumpy and nasty and we push people away. But we learn from Jesus that even if we're dealing with things on our own, we still need to care for those around us and show love and seek to serve them. The other lesson is from the disciples. They must have felt quite frustrated when Jesus said to them that they should feed these over 5,000 people when they had no food. They were trying to figure out how we're going to do this and they were getting irritated because they didn't know how they were going to feed them. They forgot to recognize who Jesus was, that Jesus was the Son of God and he was all-powerful. Now for us, we need to remember that when something is going on and we're feeling frustrated and we don't know what to do, we shouldn't spend all our time trying to figure it out on our own. We should turn to Jesus and ask him for help knowing who he, who he is. He is the King of Kings. He has it all figured out already and we can ask him for help and he will guide us to find solutions to the problems. So the next time something happens with you, don't try figure it out on your own. Turn to Jesus first. The other lesson is from the little boy. The little boy must have felt like his lunchbox wasn't much to offer. I mean, he only had two fish, five loaves of bread. But yet he was willing to offer what he had to Jesus, even though it seemed really small. He knew that Jesus would do something wonderful with that. Sometimes for us, we might feel like we don't have a lot to offer. But if we give what we have to Jesus, we will see how Jesus uses our faith to do wonderful things, to glorify him and to be such a blessing for us. So maybe there's a friend in your class and they seem really down and you don't really feel comfortable with using nice words. You don't really know how to, how to make people feel better. But you know that you need to show love to people. So you go to that friend and you say, I can see you feeling sad. Is there anything you want to talk about? And maybe even something small like that can be an opportunity for that person to come to see the love of God through you. And God will help you. He'll give you the right words to say to help others around you or to do the right thing in difficult situations. Jesus didn't actually need the two fish and the five loaves to feed all of those people. He could have created food out of nothing and still fed everybody, but he chose to use that faith of that little boy to glorify God. And I'm sure that little boy was just amazed to see what Jesus did with his lunchbox. So when Jesus got that food, 
he lifted it up to God and he thanked God for it. And then he began to multiply it. And there was just more and more and more food to feed everybody. And that should teach us that we should always be thankful for everything God gives us. Sometimes we like to complain a lot. We feel like the things we have are not good enough. And we might get so focused on complaining that we forget to have thankful hearts. And we forget to show faith in God. And we forget to actually use the things that he's blessed us with to care for others and to glorify him. So that's a good reminder for us also. Boys and girls, I hope that we've been able to learn today the wonderful things that Jesus did. And from these lessons, I hope that our faith in God will grow, that we'll trust him. We will know that we can turn to God for help at any time and that he will guide us. He will provide for us and he will do what seems impossible to us. He is able to do anything that will glorify his name. And it will be such a blessing for us to be involved with that. That brings us to our memory verse, which is from Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. When he went ashore, he saw a crowd and he had great compassion on them and healed their sick. Jesus had great compassion for the people. He really cared about them and he really cares about you and me. We can turn to God with anything at any time. We're never going to be bothering him. He is always there to help us. So I really trust that you will learn to put your faith in God and you will turn to him for help whenever you need it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are amazing. You fed thousands of people with just two fish and five loaves of bread. Thank you that you know our needs and that you take care of us. Please help us to put our faith in you, to turn to you for help and to trust that you will provide for us. Thank you for all that we have learned. Please be with us as we go into the rest of our days that we may seek to honor you and give thanks to you and to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, have an awesome day. See you soon. Bye. Hey, kids, look at what I have here. It's a fish. And it reminds me of our story today because it involves fish. Can you guess what the story is about? Well, if you guessed that it's about people being fed miraculously, then you are right. Our story today comes from the book of Matthew chapter 14. And we pick it up from verses 13. Jesus is at the center of the story. Now, we need to see what was happening at the time. Jesus was one of the most famous people in all of Israel. And one day he was out teaching the people and the people would come out to listen to him. They would listen to every word that he would speak. He spoke in such a way and he taught in such a way that the people could understand. These are people that came from different backgrounds and different cultures. Some were Jews, some were also Gentiles. Jesus taught them all, and all of them would always find something were filled with wisdom that they could take out from what he taught. But now, large crowds gathered, and they would come from faraway places. And when Jesus would teach, sometimes the sun would go down as he was teaching. Now, our story happens at such a time because he's been teaching and the disciples come to him and, he's, and they say to him that the day is almost over. You need to send the people away so they can go find a place to sleep and they can buy some food. 
But Jesus had compassion on the people that had come to listen. And he says, you don't need to send them away. Instead, you should feed them. Sure. Feed them, the disciples must have thought. With what? With what shall we feed them with? We have no food. The only food that could be found was from a little boy who had fish and some bread. Let's read from Matthew 14, verse 13. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Now when it was the evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. So the disciples have come to Jesus, and they've said, the people are hungry, we need to feed them. And the only foods they could find were five loaves and two fish. Jesus took the boy's lunch and he gave thanks. This little boy must have watched Jesus in amazement as Jesus took the food and he thanked God for it. Suddenly, a miraculous thing happened because after giving thanks for the food, Jesus started handing out the food and he told the disciples, give it to the people. And the more they handed out, the more food there was. God was multiplying the bread and the fish that this little boy had given. The crowds must have been amazed. But you know what's even more amazing? Is that after everyone was given food and everyone ate, there was food left over. The Bible tells us in verse 20 that they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. And the number of those that eight were about 5,000 men. That was the men only, besides women and children. Jesus was constantly showing and illustrating valuable lessons that would help them in their faith. With God, nothing was absolutely impossible. Not even turning two fish and five loaves of bread into lots and lots of food. Talk about fast food, hey? The disciples even filled up 12 baskets filled with leftovers. This was an undeniable miracle. That day, thousands and thousands of people repented and believed and they put their trust in God. Children, our hope is that as we share these stories of what God has done that are in the Bible, that you would see how great God is and that you would put your trust 
in God. So just a little recap. We started off our holiday club looking at how mightily God rescued his people out of Egypt and in the wilderness, in the desert, gave them bread to eat in the morning, every morning, and meat in the evenings. And then yesterday we looked at the story of Elijah and the widow. We saw how God provided for Elijah after Elijah had to run away because his life was in danger. But where he was, God provided for him. And we saw how he provided for the widow and the son. And now today, we see how God miraculously multiplies bread and fish. God is able to do these great things. And we are sharing these stories with you because we hope that you would be able to put your trust in God. Our God is mighty and he is able to provide for us. Let's pray and thank him. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you are a loving and mighty God. With you, there is nothing that is impossible. I just pray for the children that are watching this right now, that Lord, you would help them to put their trust in you. And for those, Lord, that are doing it for the first time, I pray that you would provide adults around them that would be able to teach them more about you. May we all put our trust in you and continue to grow in the knowledge of who you are. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We worship you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay. I'd like to have a peanut butter and jam sandwich. Like the, um, the peanut butter and jelly song. It's peanut butter jelly time! Hello everybody, it's time for... Chopstick Challenge! <laughs> so, our contestants have one minute to use our wonderful pretzel sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to pick up sweeties from one plate into the other and we will count which team has more sweets in their plates step up to the plate contestants it's time for a chopstick challenge Let's go, let's go! Oh, these guys are really good at this. Ten 
That doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. So we have on this plate, she's got two, <laughs> four, <laughs> six, eight, thirty. <laughs> Twenty-seven in this one, so Team Sugar wins. Mm. <laughs> Check it later, kids.
you like a bath? Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Wow, what an amazing day. Three days have gone by so quickly. And I'm just amazed at how every lesson we've learned, how God provided in different ways. And they were all miraculous. Every one of them was miraculous. But you know what struck me about today's lesson, Shepherd, mm. was that the Lord gave thanks and said grace before all the food was there. Now that's an interesting thought. So sometimes we have a need and God will provide and we know that he looks after us and his word says that he cares for us and mm. that he loves us. And sometimes I think he just wants us to be thankful first and grateful and to pray to him and to show him that we trust him. Mm. So sometimes we might not have everything we need at that time, but we can still be thankful. Absolutely. And we can still give thanks. Hmm. I'm so thankful for the last three days. I'm so thankful for everything we've learned in the last three days. I'm so thankful for donuts. <laughs> Do you know today's lesson reminded me of an amazing, real, true life story? A real story? A real story. I love real well, stories. Well, just like the real stories we learn in the Bible. But this was about a man who really loved God very much. Mm. His name was George Muller. Did you hear about him at all? George you... Muller. Mm. Mm. So he ran an orphanage. And in his lifetime, he helped over 10,000 children. That's a lot of children. But there was one occasion, one day, when it was really cold. It was snowing outside. And 300 children that were in the orphanage home got dressed and ready to go to school. Mm. When they were dressed and ready, they went down to the dining room and sat down for breakfast. But there was no food. Aww. So what George did was he sat all the children down and he gave thanks and prayed and thanked God for the food that they were about to receive. And they waited. Wow. The next thing, a few moments later, there was a knock on the door and it was the baker. Hmm. And the baker said to George, I was thinking about you last night and so I baked extra bread. Would you like some? And so he took in the bread. And moments after that, there was another knock on the door and it was the milkman. Oh. Now this is really cool. The milk cart broke down outside the orphanage door and by the time the wheel of the cart could be fixed, the milkman knew that the milk would have gone off. And so he brought in the milk and said to George, could you use this milk that's sitting on my cart? Wow. Lo and behold, the milk and the bread that came in was exactly enough to feed the 300 children. Can you believe this? So they had bread and milk and they went to school fed. Yes, and it's just so amazing again that he sat them down and they gave thanks, not knowing what was going to happen next. Our God is such a good God and he provides for all our needs. Mm. Well, thank you for joining us. And thank, thank you. you for having fun with us and for all the messages and emails and photos. And we've just had such a wonderful time. You guys can at least watch these videos over and over and over again. Yes. And, and keep on learning and reading your Bibles and trusting the Lord and obeying Him. We can't wait to see you all after the school holidays and restrictions have been lifted. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. We've had a great time with you. Time for the moment you've been waiting for. We're still counting all the videos and photos that the kids are sending in and the winner will be announced on Sunday.
So that means if you continue to send in your photos and videos, you can dress again in your team colors and that could change the outcome and we'll only find out on Sunday. Yes! That is great. So you can just click on the link below to find our Sunday service and then you can see who the winning team was. It's going to be so much fun. Great. Bye guys. Bye. That was great. <laughs>